Hi, this is Natalie with Sparks of Joy Studio. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be participating in a collaboration that is brought to us by Shabby Meets Bling and Repurpose My Way. I am so excited to be a part of this collaboration. It is my very first one. I can't wait to show you what I've made, and I cannot wait to see what everyone else that's part of this collaboration has made. Thank you so much for joining. We are going to be working on some rustic, primitive decor pieces today. Let's get started. For our first project, I will be using this burlap grain sack that I got at the Goodwill Outlet Bins. And I'm going to be starting off by cutting it up so that I can use just one side of the bag. I'm going to take this large pickle jar that I have um, removed the label from, and I am going to be spraying on some adhesive. This is Gorilla, Gru Gorilla Glue Spray Adhesive, and I'm going to be wrapping that burlap sack around the entire piece. I wrap some twine right where the jar curves in. And then I fray the top of the burlap a little bit just to give it a little bit of texture and some detail at the top. And then what I will do is on the bottom, I will take the excess of that burlap and then kind of piece it together and hot glue it down to the base of the jar in a way that still allows the jar to be level and even when I stand it back up. And believe it or not, project one is done. Here is a look at our finished jar vase with that burlap. And then I also wanted to show you another one that I made with the same burlap sack on a tin can. Our next project is another super simple rustic DIY. This is a two by four chunky riser that I created about a year ago. And what I'm gonna do is take my drill and drill in holes in random places on the top of this riser. I do wanna mention that I had previously stained this with DIY's Dark and Decrepit. Um, and I love the way that the grain came out with that stain. Once I'm done drilling all the holes, that I would like. I'm going to dump out any of the excess sawdust that was inside the holes. And now I'm coming in with a, I think it's an 80 grit sandpaper. It's a little bit rougher. And I'm going to be sanding back some of that stain as well as smoothing out the um, holes that are at the top. And that creates a, that additional like rustic contrast that you're seeing the more distressed look um, on the top of this little riser. Next, I'm taking some of these faux florals that I had found at the Goodwill Outlet Bins, and I am cutting them up and just placing them inside of those holes. I am not hot gluing them. I do not want them permanently attached because I do want to be able to switch out the greenery or the florals that I choose throughout the seasons, or if I end up selling this, I would like that the recipient be able to do that as well. Next, I have this large basket platter, I guess. Um, and I had also gotten this at the Goodwill Outlet Bins. I am coming in with cast iron by Fusion, and I'm going to try to do a wash on this piece. As I'm going through this, I'm seeing that it's not really giving me the look that I want. So I do come back in and make it the darker, fuller color that it is. And I'm going to kind of switch gears on this a little. I end up getting coal black by Fusion and I'm going to be painting the, or putting the paint on a little bit thicker. I still am using a little bit of water only to get into those cracks within the basket, but ultimately I do want this to be a more solid finish. 
I want fuller coverage. That's what I'm thinking of. Once I've achieved the look I'm going for, I let it dry, and now I'm coming in with a 220 grit sandpaper, and I'm lightly distressing back just on the edges of that wicker. Now I'm coming in with some antique wax. This is by Folk Art, and I have watered it down slightly, and I'm gonna be wiping it on to the entire piece, and then just wiping back some of the excess. My goal here is to really bring out the richness of the black. I will say this is something that I saw quite often on Repurpose My Way. Um, Shelly makes the most amazing pieces in black. Not a color I typically use, especially not in this way, but I absolutely love some of the things that she's created and the styles that she's come up with using this method. So I'm gonna try it out. Hopefully I do it justice, but seriously, if you wanna see how this is done to perfection, I highly recommend checking out her channel. Now I'm taking some of the edges of the drop cloth that I have obviously used as a um, cover on my craft table and I am finding the best place to attach this piece without any of the paint marks. I do like to save my drop cloths that I use up. I like for them to be um, clean and pretty for you guys so I recommend that as you go through them push them off to the side and then when you have a project where you need those pieces typically on the edge of the drop cloth you won't have as much paint so you can use that for your projects now I'm coming in with this very aged, very vintage crocheted piece that I got in at the Goodwill Outlet Bins. And I'm gonna be covering part of the drop cloth just with a dot of hot glue and making sure that it, I don't know, it hangs in the right place. I don't wanna cut this. I don't want to um, mess with it in any way because if I end up wanting it for a different project, I want it to be able to be removed. I'm taking these faux wheat stems that I've had in my stash and I'm trimming them down and apart so that I can place them into this uh, floral pocket that I've created. I do want to kind of angle them just to the side. I'm not looking for full coverage within this um, basket pocket. Now I'm attaching this rope or thicker twine to the back to use as a hanger and I'm going to be placing some thicker paper on top of it along with some extra hot glue on top of the rope just to make sure that it has some added um, it's a little more secure when it gets hung so there's no chance of it falling off if it's too heavy For my next project, I'm super excited. I found this a long time ago at the um, at a thrift store near me, and I've been trying to think of what to do with it. I didn't want to go with the same kind of cement look that I've done in past projects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm coming in first with some black paint, and I'm gonna cover the entire piece in this black. I then took this milk paint in the color Silhouette. This is one of the fusion milk paint colors, and I am brushing it on all over the entire piece, the trunk of the tree as well as the two birds. And I don't know if you could tell originally, but there were some florals in there. Some of them have broken off. So I really wanted to make sure with this chippy look that I'm going for that I am covering up where some of those broken um, flowers are. Now I'm gonna be covering this piece with this patina paint by Dixie Bell in the color iron. I'm not necessarily going for full coverage. I'm trying to put um, more of that patina paint on some sections and less of it in other sections for what the next step will entail. Now I'm taking some of this patina spray in the color green. That's the only color that um, works with the iron patina paint. So I'm spraying it on and I'm doing it heavier in some spots and less in some other spots. And then I'm going to let it sit for, I ended up letting it sit for days, but it says two to six hours is what's recommended. 
I was so eager and excited about this technique that I ended up trying it out on this pitcher vase as well. And we're gonna see how they both turned out because they came out very different. Let's take a look. For our last project today, I have this spindle box that I created and I actually placed the handle of the spindle box a little bit to the back so it's not exactly centered on the sides. I did that just to have, um, I don't know, to create a different look. I started by painting the base of this box black, but then I changed my mind because I decided I wanted to do some decoupage on this box. I painted the box in plaster by Fusion, and I'm now taking this decoupage paper by Recycled. It's called the Crate Collage. I got this off of Sammy's website, unicorndustdesigns.com, and I'm going to be finding the best place to um, cut this paper so that it creates a very rustic effect all over the base of the box. Now I'm going to be taking some liquid patina by DIY. I also get this off of Sammy's website and I'm going to be spreading it all over the front side of the box. And then I'm going to spritz very lightly my paper that I had cut out and lay it on top of this part of the box. I then take this little squeegee with a felt edge and I am smoothing down to get out any extra wrinkles or bubbles that are on this piece. The best part about the liquid patina is that it, it stays wet enough. Um, as long as you are careful, you can lift and um, reposition your paper. Once I have it positioned how I would like, I come in with another layer of liquid patina and I cover the entire top of the decoupage paper. I let that dry and now I'm coming in with a light 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just very gently going to be um, sanding down from you know vertically to get the edges of any excess paper off and as you can see this is actually the back side of the box this so i did this to the front i decoupaged on the back and then around the sides now i'm coming back and painting all of the parts that you see in that plaster color back in black. I should have just left them black or raw to start, but I don't know. I ended up um, painting it all in the plaster and now I'm coming back. I think originally I was going to decoupage all of this. I also paint the spindle in that black. I grabbed these leather drawer pulls that I had gotten off of Amazon and I painted two of them in that same black color. I think it's cold black by Fusion. And I am going to be gluing it with some tight bond quick and thick around the edges of each side of the front of this box. Now I'm coming in and I have these little um, tacks that I have that I've had in my stash and I am going to be um, nailing them into those openings that are on the drawer pulls. There's two on the front and then around the side there's another one. Now I'm going to be distressing back that black just to um, bring back some of the wood and some of the other lighter paint underneath and then we will seal it up with some antiquing glaze wiping back the excess and here is a look at our finished project.
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And now I want to remind you, please go check out all of the other creators who are part of this collaboration. The link to the playlist will be below. Thank you so much to Dawn at Shabby Meets Bling and Shelly at Repurpose My Way for allowing me to be a part of this collaboration. My very first, and I hope not last, one. Thanks and have a wonderful weekend.